All right, welcome back to Ultra Config Tutorials. How are you all doing? Today, I have an important video planned. We're going to be talking about model driven telemetry. If you work in the telco industry, you'll know that network monitoring is an essential practice for maintaining a healthy and resilient network. Traditionally, SNMP has been the dominant protocol for gathering data from network devices. In recent years, however, this has begun to change. There is an ongoing shift to model-driven telemetry backed by Yang models. So in today's video, we'll go into the motivation for this shift and see how it all works. We'll also do a practical example. We'll stream telemetry from a Cisco router and display the data on a beautiful Grafana dashboard. With that said, let's get to it. So, is something wrong with SNMP? Why is there demand for change? First off, let's give our respects to SNMP and the designers behind it. The original RFC of the protocol was released in 1988, so it's had an impressively long run in the real world. There's no shortage of organizations still using SNMP today. In case you don't know, SNMP is short for Simple Network Management Protocol. Although it can be used for configuration management, this was rarely ever the case. Instead, SNMP became the dominant protocol for network monitoring. That is, SNMP, for the most part, is used for gathering statistics from network devices. Let's now reflect on the performance of SNMP for network monitoring. Without a doubt, it has worked fairly well. There are some shortcomings, however. Let's go over a few. Firstly, transport can be unreliable. SNMP traps use UDP for transport. UDP is inherently unreliable. If a trap doesn't reach a data collector, the information will be lost. Another problem with SNMP is that polling is inefficient. SNMP-based solutions poll network devices. Polling adds overhead to CPU utilization and doesn't scale well with multiple data collectors. And another major limitation comes from its data models. Data available through SNMP is described in MIBs that use the syntax defined by SMIV2. A MIB is a very simple tree-like structure and comes with limitations. Alright, so we can see some of the problems with SNMP. So how does model-driven telemetry help? To be pedantic, one could argue that model-driven telemetry, MDT, isn't new as SNMP MIBs are still based on simplistic data models. However, when people use the term MDT, you can be almost sure that they are referring to solutions that use streaming rather than polling and Yang models rather than MIBs. With that said, let's go over the main advantages of model-driven telemetry. Firstly, MDT uses streaming rather than polling. Telemetry is streamed from network devices, so polling is no longer required. That is, network devices will continually transmit data at periodic time intervals or when other events occur until the subscription is no longer active. This reduces CPU utilization and enables a scalable architecture. Secondly, MDT uses transport that is reliable. Telemetry can be streamed using reliable transport protocols such as gRPC, which runs over HTTP2. And finally, we must mention Yang data models. Telemetry subscriptions use Yang data models that are much more powerful than SNMP MIBs. Also, Yang models are used by NetConf and RESTConf for network automation. So, by migrating to Yang-based telemetry, operators can consolidate their solutions to a single data model in language. Alright, now that we've gone over the theory, let's set up MDT on a Cisco router. In our lab, we're using a Cisco CSR router on GNS3. We'll begin by configuring telemetry subscriptions on the router. Then, we'll use a Telegraph server as our data collector. Once Telegraph receives the data, we'll use InfluxDB for storing it in a time series database. And finally, we'll use Grafana for presenting the data on a user-friendly dashboard. To set up a telemetry subscription, we'll first need to choose metrics of interest from the Yang models of our router. We can find all of the Yang models for Cisco on GitHub. We'll start by taking a look at the Yang model for CPU usage. By reading through the model, we can write an XPath expression for CPU utilization. Let's choose the 5 second average metric. We can see that the 5 seconds leaf sits inside a container called CPU utilization, which sits inside a container called CPU usage. And finally, the prefix for our module is process CPU IOSXE OPA. 
Given these facts, we can write out an XPath expression like so. As an alternative to manually writing our XPath expression, we could have also used a tool like Yang Explorer. We'll take a look at Yang Explorer in a future video. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss it. Let's write an XPath expression for one more stream. It's also useful to monitor statistics on an IP interface. The relevant Yang model is available on GitHub here. Let's write an XPath expression that will gather all statistics from the Gigabit Ethernet 1 interface. Using a similar method, we can come up with an XPath expression like this. Now that we have our XPath expressions, we're ready to configure dial-out subscriptions on our router. Once these subscriptions are configured, the router will begin to stream the metrics. The stream will only end when the configuration is removed. In a future video, we'll explore another approach using GNMI, a protocol developed by OpenConfig. Back to our router, let's start with the config for the CPU utilization subscription. The integer in the first line is an ID for the subscription. We then select an encoding type. We're using key value Google protocol buffers, which is compatible with the Telegraph plugin we'll later configure. We then add our XPath expression. We specify a source IP address for our stream. We set the stream type to Yang Push. Yang Push is a dial out stream, so it will work even when the device is behind a NAT or stateful firewall. We set our update policy to a periodic 500 centiseconds. This will instruct the stream to send updates every 5 seconds. Finally, we set the server details of our telegraph collector and gRPC for transport. Alright, let's paste in the config. Similarly, let's add a subscription for our interface statistics. We'll also need to enable Yang management on our router with one line of configuration, netconf yang. We can now verify the state of our Yang related processes with an operational command, show platform software Yang management process. The key process is pubd, which is responsible for telemetry. As expected, this process is now running. With that done, we can verify our subscriptions are configured correctly. Let's check the validity of our second subscription with the command show telemetry ietf subscription to detail. As desired, the subscription is in the valid state. Alright, now that our subscriptions are configured, we're ready to set up our Telegraph collector. You can download Telegraph from here. We'll skip over the installation steps as there's plenty of tutorials around for that. Once Telegraph is installed, open up the telegraph.conf file. We'll then add our input plugin, which will instruct Telegraph to listen on port 57000 for gRPC telemetry. For full details on the plugin, check out the online documentation. With that done, let's add an output plugin for storing the telemetry in an InfluxDB database. That's all we need to do for Telegraph. We can now save our config file and restart the Telegraph service to reflect our changes. The stream from our Cisco router should now be connected to our Telegraph service. We can verify this is the case by rerunning our show telemetry command, but this time with the keyword receiver. All is well, we can see that the state is now connected. So, we now have our telegraph collector ready, but our telegraph server is configured to store data in an InfluxDB database that doesn't yet exist. Let's fix that. Download InfluxDB from their website. Again, there are many tutorials around you can follow for installation. Once installed, we can run the command influx to establish a session with the database. We'll now create a new database user and password. The names of these fields must match the names configured in our Telegraph plugin. With that done, we can verify the objects were created with show commands. All looks well, we can see that the objects we created do indeed exist. So. We now have our telemetry streams to Telegraph and stored in InfluxDB. To complete our goal, we just need to present our data in a user-friendly format. To do so, start by installing Grafana following the instructions on their website. Once installed, we can create a new dashboard and begin to add panels for our telemetry. We'll start by creating a panel for our CPU utilization stream. Similarly, let's create a couple of panels for our interface statistics 
such as received packets per second and transmitted packets per second. We'll also add panels for our interface counters. Back on our dashboard, we can now see a live feed of our telemetry. Our dashboard updates itself in real time as new data is streamed. What do you think of that? Pretty cool stuff, eh? This is really powerful technology. In theory, we can display any data available in our device's Yang models. I hope this video was a good introduction for you if you're new to telemetry. It should cover everything essential to get started. Before I end today's video, I'll also shout out UltraConfig. UltraConfig is a web-based software application that was built by myself and a few of my colleagues. Our vision was to create a powerful tool for automating the generation of network config. But we wanted to do more than just build a tool that solves config automation problems. We wanted to build a platform that network engineers would love, a platform that puts a huge focus on the user's experience. When using UltraConfig, you only need to learn the templating language called Jinja2. Once users know that, they can build templates to automate config generation for any vendor they like. The software is completely agnostic to equipment manufacturers. It doesn't matter if the device is Cisco, Juniper, Huawei, Aruba, or any other vendor. If you haven't checked it out before, I highly recommend that you do. The software includes an API to fully enable end-to-end -end network automation. And the software is free to use with our free forever plan. A link to the software will be in the description. I'll also put a link in the description to a written form of today's telemetry tutorial for you to try it yourself. That'll be it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.